says Cameron practices the trumpet every ninth day, piano every 15th day, and the flutes um, every second day. I should say every second day. Cameron practiced the trumpet, piano, and the flute today. How many days until Cameron practices the trumpet, piano, and the flute again in the same day? Now, this word problem isn't as nice. It doesn't tell us least, it doesn't tell us fewest. But if you remember from the work that we did yesterday, I said that another keyword that you could use is same. If you see same, in a word problem, like towards the question, like in the question when they ask, um, when they do something again in the same day or they have like the same time or something, uh, that means least common multiple, okay? So when they use same, they're asking for the least common multiple. Now, this one's a little tricky, or not tricky, it's a little bit more challenging because they're finding the least common multiple of nine, 15, and two. So I'm gonna write nine, 15, and two. Now, looking at this, you may be confused because we're like, Ms. Soto, I don't know what factors they have in common. We gonna figure it out together. So if you're like generally confused, like, hold up, mm, this doesn't seem right, we'll do a factor table. So I'm gonna have nine, 15, and 2. I'm going to list all of the factors of 9, 15, and 2 to see if they do have something in common. So I know we have 1 and 9, and then 3 and 3. Yeah, that's it for 9. Then for 15, I have 1 and 15, and 3 and 5. And then for 2, I have one and two, and that's it. So like, what factor do they have in common? We all look at it. They do share a factor. It's just a factor that we don't use often or ever really. What factor do they have in common? If you look at the factor table, they all have one in common. So even though we don't usually use one. In this scenario, we will use the number one because this is the only factor that the numbers that we were originally looking at have in common. So I will use one because that's the only number we have. So I'm gonna write one on the outside. And then we're gonna divide everything on the inside by one. Nine divided by one is nine. 15 divided by one is 15. And then two divided by one is two. Now we're just gonna stop here because if we kept going, this will just literally be a pattern. Um, so we're done factoring out. So now we're still gonna find the LCM like we usually have been. I'm gonna draw an L around all the numbers that would be on the side and around the numbers in the last row that I used in the ladder rung. And even though this has three numbers instead of two in the middle, we can still do the same work. So I'm going to do one times nine times 15 times two. One times nine is nine. 15 times two is 30. And then I need to do nine times 30. I don't know that at the top of my head. So I'm just gonna work it on the side. Zero times nine is zero. Three times nine is 27. So our least common multiple is 270. So it'll be 270 days until Cameron practices the trumpet, piano, and the flute again. That's almost a year. Sorry. Okay, so to answer the question, because I just kind of like wrote, I just kind of said the sentence I'm gonna write down. The question says, how many days until Cameron practices the trumpet, piano, and the flute again in the same day? So we're going to say, um, Cameron will practice, and since I write really big, I'm going to summarize and paraphrase this. 
Can we practice all instruments in 270 days? And that is our answer for number five. All right, the last one. We, okay, now this one, this, this, this is the one, y'all, that I, I'm telling y'all is a little bit challenging. So make sure you are paying attention on this one. This is a little bit more challenging than number five. And I'll explain why. So it says the bells at two churches ring on different schedules. One bell rings every half hour and the other every 45 minutes. If both bells ring at 8 a.m. this morning, what will it be when both bells ring again at the same time? So again, same time, I'm gonna highlight this entire part actually, is our little key phrase to let us know that we are looking at the uh, least common multiple. Now, we have to read this a little bit more thoroughly to understand, okay, what are the two numbers that we're looking at? So it says the bells at two churches ring on different schedules. Even though two is a number, this is not one of our numbers. One bell rings every half hour. And then the other every 45 minutes. So remember, we're looking at time. So one bell rings every half hour, the other every 45 minutes. When it comes to time and minutes, how many minutes is half an hour? If you're saying 30, you're right. 30 is a half, 30 minutes is half an hour. So this equals 30 and then 45 stays the same. So that's one of the reasons why it was a little challenging. So I'm gonna write 30 and then 45. So now looking at this, I can do one of my tricks. I see that one of the numbers ends in zero and the other one ends in five. So what factor do they automatically have in common? If you're saying four, you're off by a little bit. But if you're saying five, you hit the nail on the head. They both share five in common. So I'm gonna divide both numbers by five. 30 divided by five is six. 45 divided by five is nine. Now, six and nine are not even, both of them are not even numbers, but both of them are also not prime numbers. So they probably do share a factor in common. So on the side, I'm going to find the factors of six and nine so I can figure out what number to put underneath that five. So for six, I have one and six, and then two and three. So these are factors that make up six. Let me find out factors to make up nine. One and nine, three and three. So now, I'm gonna circle all of the factors that six and nine have in common. And the only factor they have in common is three. So I'm gonna write three on the outside. And now I'm going to divide six and nine by three. Six divided by three is two. Nine divided by three is three. I know two and three are prime numbers, so I'm done factoring using the ladder method. But I'm not done solving my problem because I still have to find the least common multiple. So I'm going to draw my L around my numbers on the side and my numbers in the last row of the ladder rung. I, and, I'm, and I do this so I know what numbers to multiply. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 3 times 2 times 3. 5 times 3, I know, is 16. Not 16, Miss Soto. It's 15. 
Five times three is 15. And then two times three is six. Now, I don't know 15 times six at the top of my head, so I'm gonna write it over here on the side. Five times six is 30. One times six is six. Six plus three is nine. So the answer we have is 90. But this is minutes. So that means 90 minutes. Because we're talking about time here. So we're talking about 90 minutes. But now the question is though, what time will both of the bells ring at the same time? So this is where it gets a little bit challenging. If we start, if they rang at 8 a.m. at the same time, right? They want us to figure out, okay, at what specific time will they ring at the same time again? We know that they'll ring at the same time again in 90 minutes. But that doesn't mean the time's gonna be 890 because that's not a real time. So what do you think the time would be if we start at eight and we have 90 minutes? If you don't know, I'm gonna tell you. So first of all, 90 minutes is the same thing as an hour in 30 minutes. 90 minutes is an hour and 30 minutes. So this should be able to help us now. So what is one hour and 30 minutes after 8 a.m.? So we have an hour and 30 minutes, we have 8 a.m. So I'm gonna do the hour. So one hour from eight is nine. So I'm going to write nine. And then 30 minutes after the hour is just 30. So I'm saying 9.30 a.m. will be when they ring at the same time. I know this one was probably a little bit more confusing than the other ones, um, mainly because it had to do with the time. But this is that perfect opportunity for you to ask your parents whenever you do get your answer here, ask them, okay, what, what time do you think it would be from the time that they give you in the word problem? Use your parents to help you on the independent practice if my videos are still a little bit confusing or if you just need help trying to figure out the time, okay? Um, use your parents' help. Use other resources to help you on this independent practice, okay? Uh, so we are done with the guided practice. Um, like I just said, you have to do an independent practice. It's just like this, same word problems, but different numbers, okay? Um, tomorrow, you will, you will not have any more videos for the rest of this week. Um, tomorrow, we'll, you'll be doing a practice quizzes to just practice these call multiple. Um, and then Thursday will be a prodigy day. So um, I will be, if I haven't already, I will be sending out your prodigy information and you'll be playing prodigy while I'll be randomly calling people on Google Meet, not randomly, I'll let you know. Um, but I'll be calling people on Google Meet who need a little extra help on finding the LCM and the GCF. And then Friday you will have a test on just finding the least common multiple. Okay, so that is it for today and for this week. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, email me. Uh, don't forget when you turn in your independent practice, you uh, can either just, when if, if you work it on the computer, just click turn in or mark as done, whatever the option is that they tell you. If you do print it off and work it by hand, remember, take a picture of it. Send it to me through my email, through Remind, or attach the picture to the assignment before you submit it or turn it in. All right, y'all have a great day.